Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with the disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. On this episode, we're going to chat with Keely Cat Wells, who has firsthand experienced the barriers when entering the entertainment industry. In response to those barriers, Keely has created two companies, C Talent in Hollywood and Zetter Studios in London to hopefully change the landscape of the entertainment industry and increase the media representation of people with disabilities. But before we jump in, I wanna remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join my community in a more deep and meaningful way, you can do that by joining my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like what you see here, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much for joining Chair Chats today. I so appreciate you being here. I know a huge topic, a hot topic of discussion in the disability community is the lack of media representation of people with disabilities within the entertainment industry. Um, and so I understand that you have a love for entertaining and have experienced certain barriers and obstacles because of your disability um, to get into the entertainment industry and now you're responding to those obstacles. So I love interviewing people that are doing something, not just complaining, we can all complain about different things, but then the people that are actually taking up the, the torch and saying, all right, well, let's do it. Let's do something different then. And so that's what you're up to. Keely, if you can just tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what, what obstacles or barriers did you um, get confronted with when you became disabled? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, yes, so I had a, um, you know, a very different experience to a lot of people. I came into the industry as a able-bodied bodied person not expecting to um, you know I never even thought about being disabled I never even that wasn't a world that I was at all familiar with um, I was wanting to be a dancer I was at a great college and then all of a sudden something happened to me and I got sick and my life changed completely and coming back from that and into the industry again my mindset was completely changed I faced a lot of barriers that I hadn't seen before and there was one uh, very prominent uh, situation that happened to me and I, that really re just completely changed the way that I wanted to do things because I saw that it wasn't just me that was facing these barriers, it was so many other people. So for me, learning what I could give and learning that my perspective is so valid and my perspective is so needed rather than being brought down by those things that people told me which I knew were not true then I decided that representing and helping and pushing and fighting for the people who have been so misrepresented so underrepresented um, that really it's such a passion for me and really lights a fire in my belly and um, and that's you know it's a huge mission of mine so I think you know the the problems that we still face is the misrepresentation and the the figures of people with disabilities on the screen and on the media, in the media, it's tiny. And the authentic representation is just not there. So I think it starts with people being seen, people being heard, uh, their stories being told, and everything kind of being reframed. Right. Um, the media has such power. To what you just said, there's um, really a misrepresentation and that requires people with disabilities not just to get in front of the camera, but behind the camera to influence the decisions that are being made to identify, okay, well, how should we represent this character? 
with a disability. Um, and it be an actual accurate <laughs> account of how a person with that disability would react or act in those particular situations, whatever, whatever the storyline is. So um, it's not just people in front of the camera. It's also in all, at all levels of the entertainment industry. You mentioned that there were lies that you knew not to believe. Can you open up a little bit about what those lies were that people were telling you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the situations that happened to me was I got told that my disability was going to be off-putting to the audience. It was going to distract them from the storyline um, and it was going to be, it, it wouldn't fit with the, with the style of the piece. So that is just not true. Um, I think recently what we have learned in these, in this past week, and a lot of people have had, um, you know, they've come to revelations, they have seen things that they haven't seen before from different perspectives with the, uh, with the black community. And I think a lot of people have been misguided and they've said, oh, I don't see color, I don't see this, I don't, you know, I see everyone as people. And that is the wrong way to look at it. If people say, I don't see your disability, then they're not seeing the culture that we come from. They're not seeing the stories and the, the places that we've led. And it might come from a good place, and I'm sure it does. But I think if we are on screen, it adds to stories. It adds and it benefits to everything. Um, it brings new light, new culture, and it gives people, you know, it's a trillion dollar industry, the, the disabled community. And I think business-wise as well, people are missing out. Um, so it's, a, it's so important. I really love how you just turned it on the head, right? Like, it's not about dismissing the differences. It's about embracing those differences in a way where everybody benefits. And I love yeah. that. That's so beautiful. What were some of the barriers that you felt, besides the lies that were being told? And thank goodness, there are a lot of people that will be told those lies and actually believe them. Um, and you didn't. You said, um, that's not true. And when you know something's not true, it's easy to dismiss whatever they have to say about you and keep moving forward. Um, but besides the lies, what other barriers did you experience in the entertainment industry? A lot of my friends uh, who have physical dis disabilities, sometimes they struggle to even get in the room. You know, the locations are not accessible and production, they won't even... They, have, they don't see it, they don't, because they don't know. So knowledge is power and we have got to educate and it is, it is kind of on us to bring other people and educate and, um, and really speak out. And the other barriers, I think, is the perception that they think we are unable. Having a disability is not, does not mean that we are unable to do anything, it just means that we do things in different ways. And I think when people can really grasp that and understand that is when things will finally um, be the way they should and uh, ableism will reduce and, and people will uh, gradually include us more and more. Um, so I think people believing that they can rather than they can't and they can have the high powered jobs, they can create ways and they can speak up and educate these people. Um, it's, it's, that is the way forward. So I think just believing that you can and starting from the top down, I remember I was working, um, on kind of like a big hedge fund and I would walk into business rooms and people would be like, what is she doing here? You know, this young woman, um, she has no idea what she's doing. And it, I think it, the more we can prove people wrong and say that we can be in high powered positions, then, um, then the easier it's going to be to to get the right people in the door, uh, literally. I wanna dig deeper into that because what you're saying is essentially we also, as a community, as individuals, as part of the larger disability community is need to take responsibility to whether it is slide in the door, push down the door, um, <laughs> slam the door open, whatever it is, we need to change the narrative around disability in the eyes of people in power. And we need to um, know that we can take a side 
be side next to those in power, right? We're not beneath them. Um, we're not less valued. Um, and, and if anything, we actually probably bring a different and a newer perspective and value to uh, the current industry and of the powers that be. So if we dig deeper and we're saying, okay, people with disabilities also need to change, need to take responsibility and, and take up their torch mm -hmm. um, to make a change. What's something that they could do to start today or something small? It's a good question. Uh, I think it starts with, if we're talking, you know, where do we really begin? It's taking the initiative on ourselves to start something, start a company, start a podcast, start a newsletter, start something that will maybe reach just one person or two people. And then gradually you build a big audience full of diverse people, of people of all different colors and ages and genders and abilities. And that will hopefully produce a wonderful waterfall of conversations that will shift perspectives. And I think the the power system and the hierarchy that people seem to have stuck in their brains is something that has caused a lot of problems. When we look back at the Me Too movement, which was all because of power and people thinking they were better than one another, uh, I think as soon as we start to break those down through those down through starting something and um, and putting ourselves in those different positions, then um, then we can begin to have an equal equal role in the industry, and then hopefully in turn the world, because the media truly is that powerful. I really believe that. You're right. I know in the pre-call before I was sharing with Keely about how in this birthday book where they have like the personality types and, you know, some weird stuff. But on my birthday on the, the meditation says the media is a gun pointed at the viewer. And I was just like, what? And like, how could that be? Like, what does that mean? But if you think about it, about how the media influences our choices, influences how we think about things, influences what we feel about one another, about ourselves. It really is that powerful. And it's time that we take our place in the, in the industry. And sometimes it, it means doing something that doesn't require someone's permission, right? Like if you need permission, Keely and I are giving you that permission <laughs> to go forth and create and do something, create conversation. And it doesn't have to look like this, like a show like this in front of a camera. Um, it could look like the podcast, like she said, a newsletter, a blog, but something, there's something for any type of personality that desires to make a change, desires to be seen and heard. You have a space in this. Um, and a role. Um, and uh, that's actually one of the reasons I created One Leg Up Productions, because I'm like, why am I waiting for permission? Let's yes. just do it with technology today. We're so grateful. And what yeah. you're doing is also a response to what you've experienced. Um, can you tell us about your companies and what they're about? I didn't know which one you want to start with. So. <laughs> I'll let you Thank choose. You. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so C Talent is a company that represents disabled and deaf artists and minorities. This was started because of the, the barriers that I faced and I really wanted to see more people in the media that look like me or look like my friends or we just, and we needed those stories. And then from that, I found that uh, the people with the money have all the say. So if I could somehow find financing for movies, I would get more say for my clients to be in those movies. So I started Zeta Finance, which is a financing company where we match select parties with uh, investment opportunities, usually in very high profile movies, franchises, um, or anything socially impactful as well. We will do a lot of those. Um, and then from that, I, my long-term career goal was always to build a studio, a big major film studio, the actual infrastructure, and create a fully accessible studio with no limitations for anyone that was very uh, revolutionary with technology and was the home, you know, kind of like the Silicon Valley of entertainment. So that just happened um, earlier than expected. And it's very exciting. We are, we've put together kind of a, uh, everything that we want, the whole vision. And now we're looking at 
uh, where we're actually going to build it in the UK. Um, and it's in the UK purely because of the tax incentives and because of the, um, the requirement for, for studio space. Um, it's, it's crazy, it's bigger than any other country. They need so much studio space. So the hope is that uh, all of the companies will kind of integrate and, um, and it all spurs from my clients. They are so inspirational in the work that they've done, the talent that they have to give and building them a platform has always been something that inspires me kind of every single day. That's amazing. So if you're in the US and you are someone who wants to be in front of the camera and have a disability or are a minority of any sort, see talent, see talent.com is where you're going to want to go. Um, and I'm sure that they do an amazing job of representing you to many different projects. And on the other side of the pond, <laughs> It's Zetter Studios. So Zet, you, you mentioned it'll be a fully accessible studio. Is that for other companies to be able to come and shoot? Yes, absolutely. It will be for um, larger companies like Marvel and Apple TV, as well as companies that are smaller, um, like indie production companies. I want to give them the chance to get studio space. I know it's very difficult for, for smaller productions to get that space. So there will be a designated stage just for productions like that. Um, so yes, it will be fully accessible in every single sense and giving the opportunities to the people who, um, who have missed out on them because of the social climate that we've been living in. Thank you so much. Um, you know, just as a reminder, Keely is doing big, big stuff, <laughs> and sometimes it may, it's, it's easy to compare ourselves to someone else who's doing something so big, and you're like, well, who am I to do something, or what can I do? And like we said earlier, no matter who you are, no matter how small, every drop counts in yeah. creating this ripple effect that will eventually hopefully infiltrate the entertainment industry. And I, what I love what you're doing, um, Keely, and I feel like a kindred spirit with you in this sort, um, is that you didn't wait for another talent agency to accept you or other people with disabilities. You said, I am going to be that talent agency and I'm going to be that studio. And really, I think if anything, no matter how small or big of a, mark you can um do at the moment you have to be it first right it's easy to talk about it but be that and um it'll be amazing to see what happens and i'm so excited to see uh what talent comes out of c talent um and zetter studios it'll be so cool when at the credits you'll see zetter studios thank you to zetter studios <laughs> And, and maybe, you know what, what Zetter Studios will do is it will actually create an example of how other studios can um, rebuild or, or build new developments of studios so that way they're accessible. Because I know when we were speaking earlier, you mentioned that um, even when people with disabilities are interested in acting, they can't get to their acting classes because they're held in an inaccessible um, building. And... Mm -hmm. It's, it, you know, from the top down, it, it, it's everywhere. So the ableism and the, the barriers are everywhere. So um, thank you for <laughs> being the example of what's possible and, and paving the way for many people with disabilities who are interested in uh, breaking into the entertainment industry at any level. Um, is there any other, any other thing that you'd like to add or information? Um, thank you. I would just go back as well to, you know, how, what can people do to get involved and to help, you know, just listening to someone's podcast, just watching the TV show, signing up to the newsletter, participating. That is so helpful. It's even, you know, it, that is one of the most important things. We really need those fans and the supportive uh, audiences and, um, and those people that really show the love for it. So I think that is also one of the most important things that anyone can do. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So on that note, subscribe and share. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Keely, so much. And thank you for the, for the nice shameless plug that I'm about to make to have you subscribe and share to my, to my 
channel and follow me on social media. Um, I actually do a private Facebook group called Victoriously Living, where we talk about how to li live a life of victory. Um, and so I'd love to have you join my community in that area. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much for watching. And until we meet again, be blessed. Thank you.